What's up everybody and thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Wack4863, but you can call me Wack. Today I'm going to go over the major update that's come to She Will Punish Them and the subsequent hotfix that's come out since that update because I dove into the update when it came out on the 22nd and honestly if I had done a video right away I probably would have given She Will Punish Them a really really hard time for the way the game played right after the update. But since the hotfix it's been much much better. The difference a day makes is a lot. I'm going to be honest with you, when the update came out I was really excited, really wanted to jump in and start playing it right away and I wanted to make a video about the update. But as I played it, I got really frustrated. I was really not enjoying the game whatsoever. And a lot of the people over on their official Discord were talking about a lot of the things that I was having issues with. And so a couple of days after this update, we got a hotfix. And that hotfix is one of the steps in working to balance the combat even more. The combat was really, really hard to deal with when the update came out. You got staggered a lot, you'd be stuck you couldn't roll away properly and get away from damage fast enough and then when you were trying to attack if something hit you you'd be staggered and not be able to attack so there was all these things going on and as you can see from the video that you're watching right now post hotfix those things aren't happening in my gameplay I actually feel like I am able to be in combat and not have to run away, not have to rely on my minion to do all the work. And I'm going to be honest, I haven't died a whole lot in this game until this update. And then the hotfix has then rectified those issues that I was dying to. So let's go over this update. I'm not going to put any notes on the screen. I'm just going to read them to you while you guys watch me play the game. So improved combat, the battle difficulty curve is smoother and more challenging. Challenging is okay. Absolutely crushing you is not okay. We have a comprehensively modified AI's animation, attributes, speed, etc. to widen each monster's gap and combat experience. The combat is more punishing now, so even if you have high level equipment, you can still be killed if you're not playing carefully enough. Each map comes with a final boss that needs to be killed to clear the level. Now what I'll say is when they talk about each map having a final boss, those are actual locations. Those are not the incursions that you'll find on the map that are just roaming around. There are also mini bosses and elite enemies waiting to challenge you somewhere on the map. So that's all good and dandy. Like I said, it's okay if it's challenging. It's not okay if it's completely overbearing. I feel like the update was completely overbearing. And they probably overlooked a few mechanics and the way that people play. And they've toned that back. They brought that back to where it's an enjoyable experience. And I'm going to say it has to be fun. If it's no fun, nobody's going to play the game. So make sure the game is fun first, challenging second, and rewarding third. It goes on to say we have also brought more tension to the combat by bringing back locking regions and losing equipment mechanics. Some locations on the combat maps will get locked down once you enter them. The only way out is to kill everyone inside. And if you die in combat, your equipment will be dropped on the ground where you got killed. You can always retrieve it unless you get killed again. Now something that they added in the hotfix is actually the ability to turn that off. So if you don't want to play with dropping equipment, there's actually a checkbox you can click to turn off the drop equipment on death feature, which is really, really good because there's a lot of people that one, just don't want to play that way or there are so many different skill levels of players out there that that may be something that would be a big disadvantage for people with a lower skill level. Moving on in the notes here, remade maps. We remade the combat maps, including all the skirmish maps. Visual wise, we have added much more environmental details such as wetness to terrain, volumatic fog, particles, clouds, etc. The level design and the size of the maps are also optimized so you won't get lost during combat. It goes on to talk about the skirmishes and those remain somewhat the same but with a smaller and more delicate map. And this is really nice because it was really wide open and you'd be searching for a lot of enemies. 
Now it's much smaller, it's much more condensed, you're not searching as much for enemies. One thing I have noticed though with these smaller maps is you could be fighting a group of enemies, kill all of those enemies and have another group spawn very very close to you or even on top of you I would say. They haven't spawned on top of me but they have spawned right on top of my minion. So those skirmishes may still need just a little bit of fine tuning and refinement. Succubus companions. So what's better than one sexy succubus? Two sexy succubuses. Succubuses? Succubi? Succu... <laughs> Succubi. Okay, so we have added customizable companions to your game. You can dress them up, equip them, and level up their abilities to whatever you see fit. They can be mighty warriors who fight alongside of you and help carry your additional loot, but it's up to you what kind of role they are going to play in battle. To acquire new companions, you'll need to complete the special rescue mission. You will need to fight your way through the dungeon and break the prison door to rescue a captured companion. Beware that enemies will keep generating while you are breaking the door. So, better take some extra help to deal with the endless hordes Companions will be living with you in your palace and you can see them bathing, chilling on the couch or lying on the bed. In the future, we'll add more interactions that companions can do while at the home. Minion scrolls. To bring some dynamics to combat, the minions are now purchasable as magical scrolls that can be summoned in battle anytime you feel like you need a boost. You can get different minions such as skeleton warriors, draugr archers, orc swordsmen, etc. You can take as many scrolls as you want, as long as you have enough space in your inventory. Home expansion. The palace is more complete now, and we've added several new rooms, including the throne hall, dungeon, and so on. Most rooms need to be unlocked with crystals before you can enter. We have implemented freestyle furniture and object placement system, which allows you to purchase furniture and place it anywhere you want. There's a lot of furniture available for you to design your palace with, such as beds, couches, bathtubs, decorations, torture devices, etc. We have also integrated the lingerie purchasing function into the main dressing room and the special themed lingerie such as the Valentine's lingerie set can now be purchased as a set through the special event collection wardrobe located in the dressing room. I'm kind of sad that they took that away, those of us that had it, and then makes us purchase it with crystals, but it's not like they're getting any money out of it, so it's not a big deal. It's just an investment of time. They've added a free pose mode. The new free pose mode allows you to pose your succubus anytime and anywhere. You will have a selection of poses you can use together with the free rotation camera so that you can view your succubus from any angle and distance. You could view your succubi because technically you have a second one. So just saying. The cool thing about this feature is that your succubus is no longer restricted to a few poses on furniture. You can technically oppose her anywhere in any pose we provide, thus giving you more possibilities for the beautiful succubus screenshots. Random weapon stats have been added into the game, and actually it's weapons and armors that will get random stats attached. For example, additional fire damage to a sword, you will have a much higher chance of getting magical enhanced items from defeating bosses or looting golden chests. Controllers are, they say fixed, fixed controllers. We have fixed some controller related bugs and optimized the key binding menu for both controllers and keyboards. That's really cool. I'm actually not using a controller. I know for those of you that know who I am and my content, you know I play most games with a controller. I'm actually playing this full on mouse and keyboard. I haven't tried the controller whatsoever. So at some point I should pick up the controller and try this out with the controller. But for now, I'm just playing with the mouse and keyboard. Multiple saves. Yes, it's been added into the game. However, it's just for each new game. So if you start a new game, you will have a new save slot for that game. So essentially, you could have one character that you level up a certain way. You could start a new game and level a different character up a different way. That way you can see how that all works out. You cannot, however, do multiple saves of the same playthrough. It's just multiple saves for different playthroughs. 
It goes on to say, some of the features from our previous announcements are still in development, such as achievements, wish fountains, etc., but it's coming soon in the near future. For this update, you start a new game. So your old game save goes away, this update then takes over, and you start all over again. Now I'm just going to quickly fly through the hotfix notes here. So added music for combat maps. That's a really nice feature. Different music when you get into combat. Really like that. Bug fix. Click on the free pose menu tool icons. will exit the free pose mode. Bug fix. Open inventory will holster weapon bug that was really annoying and actually it was to the point where you almost couldn't get that weapon back out of your inventory but that's gone a successful parry does not play the parry animation instead it stuns the player that's been fixed bug fix can't enter level 5 map i haven't gotten that far so i never tested it myself but that's been fixed combat balancing this is a big thing reduced stun lock duration huge not having that stun lock on your character is a big, big deal. Reduced dodge duration, so it doesn't take you as long to cover that distance. That's really good. Tweaked animation speed for all weapons because they were very, very slow. Hopefully, all the weapons are faster now. I did notice that both the dagger and the sword were faster after the hot patch than they were before. Tweaked the two-handed sword animation. That's cool. Increase the chance of enemies circling you instead of charging right into you. All right, so now I want to cover some of the things that were not in the patch notes but have been changed in the game or added to the game. The first thing is they've added some keys to the game. So now there are certain chests that you have to have keys to unlock. And these keys do drop randomly, but it's not that often. So it's a little bit odd that you go into an area you may not have a key in your inventory and if you don't get a key to drop on that map then what ends up happening is you actually can't get into the chest you saw i just picked up a golden key so i'll be able to open a chest with a golden key however there are golden keys and then there are also metal keys so there are two different types of keys two different types of chests and i'm not entirely sure whether i think this edition is the best for the game now they have added a couple of things that I really wanted in the game. These were on my wish list. And number one is the ability to sprint. You can do that with shift currently. And then they also have the roll dodge, which they had before, but that is on the space bar. And that has been improving. Additionally, they've changed the way the rage meter or the succubus meter, whatever you want to call it, the power attack, that meter now slowly, gradually expires. It doesn't just run out. So that is something that you're going to want to save up and work towards in order to use that at the proper time. Another thing that they've added is a stamina system. Now, currently, I think the stamina is maybe a little bit light. I think maybe you could have a bit more stamina, especially for the running. I don't feel like the running should require as much stamina. Just getting across these little maps can be quite difficult, and you can run out of stamina quickly. So definitely pay attention to your stamina bar currently, but I'm hoping to see some tweaks and adjustments to that where it doesn't empty as fast as it does right now from running. Quick looting is also finally in the game. So all the gold and different things, the mana potions, you're going to pick up automatically. But if there's something on the ground that needs to be picked up, you no longer have a two-step process in order to do that. You don't have to hold tab and then click each item to pick it up. You can simply walk up to the item and press F on your keyboard. Those are four big changes that I thought were important for them to make in order to have a more successful game and a more fluid gameplay experience. Moving forward, I think a couple of decisions that they need to make is one, whether they really want to have keys to open all these different chests. Two, I think the attributes or the abilities that they're adding to the game, they need to look at and really make sure that they're fine tuning those. There are some that say they are a work in progress and coming soon, and I'm really excited to see how those things pan out in the future. 
And right now, you can actually pick up She Will Punish Them for under $10 US. It's $9.59 US right now. And honestly, I really feel like the game is worth the $10. I have purchased worse games for $10 than She Will Punish Them. And I say that with the caveat that She Will Punish Them continues to develop and they stay on the path that they're currently on right now. The gameplay needs to be fun, number one. It needs to be challenging, number two, and it needs to be rewarding, number three. If they can continue on this path, they're going to have a very successful game. And of course, there are also the sexy succubi. Now I want to know in the comment section below, what game are you currently playing? What's your jam? Let me know that in the comment section below. The whack moments in this video were sponsored by my legendary supporters. Thank you very much. If you'd like to become a member, you can click the button below that says join. That'll give you all the details. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for their continued support, likes, comments, and general awesomeness. If you're not a subscriber, you can start your free trial today and cancel at any time. Clicking the bell is highly recommended so you get notified when I upload another video. Now, if you're not done watching, there's two videos on the screen. You could pick one of those to watch next. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed making it. I'll catch you next time. Peace.